Preface of Vairagya Sadakam by Bhartruhari. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Uday Sagar. Vairagya Sadakam by Bhartruhari. Translated by Swami Madhavananda. Preface. The Vairagya Satakam is one of the three series of the hundred verses which have come down to us under the title of Subhasita Trisati, literally the happily worded three centuries, and associated with the name of the poet Bhatruhari. In some manuscripts, these verses exceed the number implied in the above name, but we have followed the authority of an edition published by the Ninaya Sagar Press of Mumbai which maintains the exact original number. Tradition attributes the authorship of these verses to Bhatruhari, the elder brother of the most renowned king Vikramaditya of Ujjain. Controversy has not yet settled the point as to which Vikramaditya was the brother of the poet and when exactly he reigned at Ujjain. The fact, it seems that Bhatruhari belonged to a royal family and renounced the world later on in life. To become a yogi forms the most reliable nucleus round which growing and sometimes conflicting traditions have continued to gather. A cave is still pointed out near Ujjain bearing his name where Bhatruhari is said to have practiced austerities. A book called the Nadali Lamrita recording from hearsay stories about the celebrities of the Nata sect of yogis contains an account of Bhatruhari's life in a loose legendary style but it is easy to make out that when all clue to authenticity about the real facts of Bhatruhari's life became lost to tradition the memory of a career so stimulating to imagination was not allowed to go down so hopelessly denuded of facts and the process of adding limbs and features to the stamps of an older tradition naturally went on add to this process such floating legendary materials as a story about a gift made to one's beloved proving her infidelity by changing hands till it reached the donor again or the miracles with which the then famous sect of yogis used to be credited and so on and you hope to get a fairly good biography of Bhatruhari such as gradually gained currency in tradition the verses composed maybe with stray exceptions by Bhatruhari himself cannot be made to give any clue to his individual life, for his poetry seeks to create effect through style and sentiment too conventional to yield themselves to such use. But still, his lifelong lessons from experience and observation must have been reflected in their peculiar trend and emphasis in the movements of sentiment through the verses, and it may be possible for a reader of penetrative intellect to trace out from such nice shades the bare outline of a deeper life of hard-fought struggles and late-won victory. A nature straightforward, possessed of noble faith in itself, unambitious of high distinction among men, but deeply susceptible to the beauties and charms of sentiment, seems to have been involved in a tangle of sensual enjoyments, too heavy to leave in the sustained strength for wielding the scepter till from a life of such weakness and consequent dependence it gradually rose through reactions deep and incisive to a wonderfully enriched sense of worldly vanity and an effective strength of renunciation the verses composed by Bhatruhari tend to present to view the background of such a nature holding in control lower susceptibilities once indulged by the dawning possibilities of a life of yoga and though it is difficult to ascertain how far this life of yoga had advanced behind the role of the poet representing different stages of wisdom it is fairly presumptive that the poet's voice gradually merged in the silence of the highest spiritual realizations the hundred verses of the vairagya satakam are divided into ten groups under the following ten headings trishna dushnam condemnation of desire Vishaya Parityaga Vidambana Futile efforts to give up sin's objects Yancha Dainya Dushanam Condemnation of the poverty of a supplicant attitude 
Bhoga Stairya Varnanam Delineation of the Evanescence of Enjoyments Kala Mahimanu Varnanam Description of the Working of Time or the Principle of Change Yatin Rupati Sambhada Varnanam A Comparison as to how a monk stands to a king Manaha Sambodhana Niyamanam Control of Mind by Stimulating Wisdom in it Nityanitya Vastu Vicharaha Discrimination of the immutable reality from the mutable. Shivarchanam, worship of Shiva. Avaduta Charya, the way of life for an avaduta or a realized ascetic characterized by the highest spiritual freedom. With these few remarks of a prefatory nature, we send forth this English translation of an important poetical production of medieval India into the world of modern readers. The translation has been made rather too closely literal, especially to suit the convenience of those readers who want to follow the original Sanskrit with its help. Words by Publisher End of Preface Chapter 1 of Vairagya Satakam by Bhartra Hari Translated by Swami Madhavananda This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Uday Sagar Chapter 1 Condemnation of Desire Chudo Thamsita Charu Chandra Kalika Chanchachika Basvaro Leela Dagda Vilola Kama Shalabha Shreyo Dasha Grace Puran Anthas Purja Dapara Mohati Mira Pragbhara Muchatayan Sheta Sadmani Yogi Nam Vijayate Gnana Pradipo Haraha 1. All glory to Shiva, the light of knowledge, residing in the temple of the yogi's heart, who smites away, like the rising sun, the massive front of the endless night of ignorance, overcasting human minds, in whose wake follow all auspiciousness and prosperity, who burnt up gay lust as a moth, as if in sport, and who appears beaming with the lambent rays of the crescent, adorning his forehead, Rays that look pleasing like soft half blooming buds. Chudo Tamsita made an ornament for the head. Charu Kalika Chanchachika lame in beams like beautiful half blooming buds. Leela Dagdha burnt up at ease or in spot. Shreyo Dasha Grey in front of all circumstances of prosperity. Sfuran appearing. Antas Furjat spreading forth in the heart, Pragbharam, heavy mass at the front. As is customary with Sanskrit poets, this opening verse is dedicatory to Shiva in this instance, as forming an auspicious introduction. Brantam desha maneka durga vishamam, praptam nakinchit phalam, tyaktva jati kulabhimana muchitam, seva kruta nishvala, Buktam mana vivarjitam para Gruheshva shankaya kakavat Trushne jrumbasi papa karma Pishune nadhyapi santushyasi 2. Many are the inaccessible and perilous places I have travelled and yet obtained no riches. Sacrificing proper dignity of birth and social position, in vain have I served the rich. Like the crows, have I fed myself, devoid of self-respect, at the house of others in the expectation of gain and yet o oh, desire thou prompter of evil deeds thou art waxing lustier and art not still satisfied aneka durga vishamam rendered difficult of access by various obstacles phalam result but here wealth ashankaya hankering after gain papa karma pishune Indicative of evil deeds. Utkhatam nidishankaya kshiti talam dmata kire dhatavo nistirna hasaritam patin rupatayo yatnena santoshita mantra radhana tatparena manasa nitaha smashane nishaha praptaha kana varata kopi namayatrushne sakama bhava. 3. The earth have I digged into, in quest of precious minerals, and metals from rocks have I smelted. 
the ocean have i crossed and the favor of kings have i diligently sought nights have i spent on burning grounds with my mind occupied with mantras and worship and not even a broken cowrie have i obtained be satisfied therefore o desire khala lapah sodah khadam api tada radana parayni gruyantar bashpam hasitam api shunena manasa kruto vitta stambha pratihata diya manjalirapi tvamashe moghashe kimu paramato nartayasimam for in our servile attendance on the wealthy wicked their shabby manners and talk we have somehow put up with suppressing tears that welled up from our hearts we have smiled out of vacant minds obeisances we have made to dullards stultified by too much wealth in what more fooleries wouldst thou have me dance o desire thou of ungratified yearning vitta stambha pratihata diyam those rendered dull in intellect by inactivity due to too much wealth modashi with hopes thwarted another reading is chitta stambha as a separate word the meaning then would be we have restrained our feelings and made obeisances etc amisham prananam tulita bisini patra payasam krute kim nasma birvi galita vivekairvya vasitam yada dhyanam agre dravina mada nissanya manasam krutam vita vridair nijaguna kada patakam api five what have we not endeavored to do with our depraved conscience for the sake of our pranas five vital forces which are unreliable and compared to water on the leaves of a lotus since in the presence of the rich with their minds stupefied by the pride of wealth we have shamelessly committed the sin of recounting our own merits according to the scriptures self glorification is tantamount even to the sin of suicide kshantam nakshamaya gruhochita sukham tyaktam na santoshatah sodoh dussah sheeta tapa pavana klesho na taptam tapah dhyatam vitta maharnisham niyamita pranair na shambho padam tat tat karma krutam yadeva muni bhistastaih phalair vanchitah 6 we have forgiven but not out of forgiveness but out of our incapacity to right our wrongs we have renounced the comforts of home life but not out of contentment after satisfaction but as an exile from home in quest of riches though we have suffered inclemencies of weather cold and heat so difficult to bear still it is not religious austerities that we have undergone with subdued vital forces night and day have we brooded on money and not on the feet of shiva thus we have performed those very acts which the munis saintly recluses do perform but of their good effects we have deprived ourselves bhoga na bhukta vayameva bhukta stapo na taptam vayameva tapta kalo nayato vayameva yata strushna na jirna vayameva jirna 7 worldly pleasures have not been enjoyed by us but we ourselves have been devoured no religious austerities have been performed but we ourselves have become scorched time is not gone being ever present and infinite but we ourselves are gone because of approaching death desire is not reduced in force though we ourselves are reduced in senility here there is an ironical pun on the participles buktah and taptah the former being used both in the sense of enjoyed and eaten up and the latter both in the sense of austerities performed and heated similarly the participle jirnah means both reduced in force and stricken down with age the effect of course cannot be preserved in translation vali bhirmuka makrantam palite nankitam shiraha gatra nishidilayante trushnaika 
tarunayate. 8. The face has been attacked with wrinkles. The head has been painted white with grey hair. The limbs are all enfeebled. But desire alone is rejuvenating. Nivrutta bhogecha purusha bahu mano pigalitaha samana svariyataha sapadi suhrudo jivita samaha shanair yaschudhanam ganatimira ruddecha nayane aho drushtaha kaya stadapi marana paya chikitaha. 9. Though my compeers dear to me as life have all taken such a speedy flight to heaven before being overtaken by old age. Though the impulse for enjoyment is varied out and the respect commanded from all persons lost, though my sight is obstructed by deep blindness or cataract and the body can raise itself but slowly on the staff, still, alas, for its silliness, this body startles at the thought of dissolution by death. Raga Grahavati Vitarka Vihaga Dhairya Druma Dvamsini Moha Varta Sudusta Rati Gahana Protunga Chinta Tati Tasyaha Paragata Vishuddha Manaso Nandanti Yogi Shwaraha 10. Hope is like a flowing river of which the ceaseless desires constitutes the waters. It rages with the waves of keen longings and the attachments for various objects are its animals of prey. Scheming thoughts of greed are the aquatic birds that abound on it, and it destroys in its course the big trees of patience and fortitude. It is rendered impassable by the whirlpools of ignorance, and of profound depth of bed as it is. Its banks of anxious deliberation are precipitous indeed. Such a river the yogis of pure mind pass across to enjoy supreme felicity. End of chapter 1 Condemnation of Desire Recording by Uday Sagar Chapter 2 of Vairagya Satakam by Bhatruhari Translated by Swami Madhavananda This LibriVox recording is in the public domain Recording by Uday Sagar Futile efforts to give up sense objects. 11. I do not find the virtuous distinction produced by ceremonial observances through life after life to be conducive to well-being, for the sum of such virtuous merits, when weighed in mind, inspires fear in me. Enjoyments earned by great accession of merit multiply so greatly in the case of people attached to them, only to bring them misery and peril. Vipakaha punya nam. The idea is to show the futility of good deeds performed in our earthly life with the object of enjoying happiness in heaven or higher lokas, for the heavenly enjoyments are transitory as being the result produced by our virtuous merits. When the force of these merits is spent, the enjoyments must cease and the soul will again be drawn back to the cycle of births and deaths until by jnana or spiritual illumination it attains moksha or final release from the wheel of transmigration. Vyasanamivadhatum It indicates that the enjoyment of pleasures in heavens binds still more fetters on us by increasing our thirst and hence is the cause of an added volume of miseries. Avashyam yatarash chiratara mushitva apivishaya Vyoge ko vedas tyajati sajano yatsvaya mamoon Vrajantaha svatantriyadatula parita paya manasaha Svayam tyakta ye teshama sukha manantam vidadati 12. The objects of enjoyment even after staying with us for a long time are sure to leave us some time. Then what difference does their privation in this way make to men that they do not of their own accord discard them? If the enjoyments leave us on their own initiative, that is, if they tear themselves from us, they produce great affliction of the mind. But if men voluntarily renounce them, they conduce to the eternal bliss of self-possession. Brahma jnana vivekino maladiyaha kuruvantyaho dushkaram yan munchan thupaboga banjapi dhananye kandato nispruhaha sampraptani pura na samprati nacha praptau dhruda pratyayan 
वांछा मात्र परिग्रहान्य परम त्यक् न शक्ता वयम थर्टीन आ इट मस्ट बी इन दीड अ डिफिकल्ट फीट विच पर्सन्स विद अर माइंड प्यूरिफाइड बाय द डिस्क्रिमिनेशन अराइजिंग फ्रॉम द नॉलेज ऑफ ब्राह्मण अकम्पलिश इन दैट फ्री फ्रॉम डिजायर दे होली डिस्कार्ड दैट वेल्थ विच हैज बीन एक्चुअली ब्रिंगिंग दम एन्जॉयमेंट वेर एज वी फेल टू रिनाउंस एन्जॉयमेंट्स which are ripped by us as mere longings and which we never did realize in the past nor do we realize now nor can we count upon as lasting when obtained in future dhanya nam giri kandareshu vasatam jyotihi param dhyayata manandashru jalam pibanti shakuna nishankamam keshaya asmakam tu manorado parachita prasada vapi tata क्रीडा कानन खेली कौतुक जुषा मायु परम क्षीयते फोर्टीन ब्लेस्ड आर दोस हु लिव इन माउंटेन केव्स मेडिटेटिंग ऑन ब्राह्मण द सुप्रीम लाइट वाइल बर्ड्स डिवाइड ऑफ फ्यूर पर्च ऑन द लैप्स एंड ड्रिंक द टेर ड्रॉप्स ऑफ ब्लिस दैट द शेड इन मेडिटेशन वाइल आर लाइफ इज फास्ट एबिंग अवे इन द एक्साइटमेंट ऑफ रेवलरी इन पलेशियल मैंशंस or on the banks of refreshing pools or in the pleasant gardens all created and brooded over merely by imagination shakuna nishankamam keshaya the birds have approached them fearlessly because they have reached the state of tranquility and harmlessness realizing the oneness of life bikshashanam tadapi neerasam ekavaram shayya cha bhuh parijano nija deha matram वस्त्र विशीर्ण शतखंडमयी चकंदा हा हा तदा विषया न जहाति चेत फिफ्टीन फॉर फूड आई हैव वॉट बेगिंग ब्रिंग्स एंड दट टू टेस्टलेस एंड वंस अ डे फॉर बैट द अर्थ एंड फॉर अटेंडेड द बॉडी इट सेल्फ फॉर ड्रेस आई हैव अ वन आउट ब्लैंकेट मेड अप ऑफ अ हंड्रेड पैचेस एंड स्टिल अ लास द डिजायर्स डू नॉट लीव मी स्तनौ मंसग्रंथी कनकलशा विद्युपमित मुखम श्लेष्मागारम तदि च शशाक तुलित श्रवन्मूत्रक्लिन्न करीवर शि स्पर्धि जगनम मुहूर्निंद्यम रूप कविजन विशेषर्गुरुत सिक्सटीन मंसग्रंथी लम्स ऑफ फ्लैश ज्यूल नंबर कनकलशा विद्युपमित बिकम गोलडन जग्स इन पोएट्स कंपेरिजन श्लेष्मागारम सीट ऑफ फ्लैम सलाइवा एक्सेट्रा शशाक तुलित इज कंपेर्ड टू द मून करीवर शि स्पर्धि क्लेमिंग लाइकनेस विद द एलिफेंट्स फोरहेड महूर निंद्यम रूपम फॉर्म डिजर्विंग कॉन्स्टेंट कंटेम्प्ट हैज बीन मैग्निफाइड इन प्रेस बाय सर्टेन पोएट्स एको रागिशु राजते प्रियतमा देहार्दधारी हरो नीरागेशु जनो विमुक्त ललना संगो न यस्मात्पर दुर्वार स्मर बान पन्नग विषव्याध मुग्धो जन शेष काम विडंबिता विषयान भोक्त न मोक्त क्षम सेवेन्टीन अमंग सेंशुअल पर्सन्स शिवा इज यूनिक शेयरिंग हाफ इज बॉडी विथ इज बिलवेड एंड अगेन अमंग द डिस्पैशनेट देर इज नन सुपीरियर टू हिम एंड अटैच टू द कंपनी ऑफ वुमेन while the rest of mankind smitten and stupefied by the irresistible serpent like poisoned arrows of cupid and brought under the infatuation of love can neither enjoy the desires nor renounce them at will priyatama dehardhari this refers to the symbolic representation of shiva and gauri in a single divided form on one side grows the hair in long and black curls and on the other corded like rope one side is white with ashes like the snow mountains the other golden as the light of the dawn for he the lord took a form and that was a divided form half woman and half man bhoktum namuktum kshamaha ordinary persons when they give themselves up to the enjoyments lose all control and become slaves to them so even when satiety comes they cannot detach themselves from them as the force of blind attachment has enslaved them but shiva who has subdued his mind is unaffected by them as in a state of mental poise of yoga pleasure and pain are the same to him ajananda hatmyam patatu shalabho deepadahane samino pyagna nad badisha 
युतमश्नातु पिशितम् विजानन्तो पेता वयमिह विपज्जा लजटिलान नमुंचामह कामानह गहनो मोहमहिमा 18 without knowing its burning power the insect jumps into the glowing fire the fish through ignorance eats the bait attached to the hook whereas we even though having full discernment do not renounce the sensual desires complicated as they are with manifold dangers alas how inscrutable is the power of delusion trusha shushyatya se pibati salilam shita maduram kshudartaha shalyannam kabalayati mamsadikalitam pradipte kamagnau sudrulatara malingati vadum pratikaram yadeh sukamiti viparyasyati janaha 19 when the mouth is parched with thirst man takes some cold refreshing or sweetened drink when suffering from hunger he swallows boiled rice made delicious with meat and the like when set on fire by last he fast embraces his wife so happiness is but remedying these diseases of hunger thirst and lust and behold how man that is his sense is upset in its quest pratikaram vyadeha sukamiti the main point to be understood is that worldly happiness is but the temporary remedy we constantly seek for all the diseases with which worldly life is beset when this relative and fugitive nature of happiness becomes apparent to us we naturally give up running after it to seek permanent peace in renunciation tungam veshma sutaha satam abhimataha sankhyatiga sampadaha kalyani daita vayascha navamitya jnana mudho janaha matva vishva manashwaram nivishate samsara kara gruhe sandrushya kshana banguram tadakilam danyastu sanyasyati 20 possessed of tall mansions of sons esteemed by the learned of untold wealth of a beloved wife of beneficence and of youthful age and thinking this world to be permanent men deluded by ignorance run into this prison house of worldliness whereas blessed indeed is he who considering the impermanence of the same world renounces it end of chapter two futile efforts to give up sense objects Recording by Uday Sagar Chapter 3 of Vairagya Satakam by Bhartruhari Translated by Swami Madhavananda This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Uday Sagar Condemnation of the Poverty of a Supplicant Attitude Dina Dina Mukaih Sadaiva Shishukaira Krishna Jirnambara Kroshadvihi Kshudi Tair Niranna Vidura Drushyana Chedgehini Yancha Bhanga Bhayena Gadgadagala Trutyad Vilinaksharam Kode Hiti Vadetsva Dagda Jatarasyarde Syarthe Manasvi Puman 21. If one had an occasion to see one's wife suffering without food, and so aggrieved at the constant sight of hungry crying children with piteous looks pulling at our worn-out cloths what self-respecting man would for the mere sake of his own petty stomach utter give me that has become a supplicant for favour in a voice faltering and sticking at the throat for fear of his prayer being refused abhimata maha mana grandi prabeda patiyasi Gurutara guna gramam bhoja sfuto jwala chandrika vipula vila sallajjavalli vitana kutarika jhatara pitari dushpureyam karoti vidambanam 22. The pit of our stomach so hard to fill is the root indeed of no small undoing. It is ingenious in serving the vital knots as it were of our fond self-respect. It is like the bright moonlight shining on the lotus that species which blooms only in the sun of highly estimable virtues it is the hatchet that hews down the luxuriant creepers of our great modesty punye grame vane va mahati ita patta channa pali kapali madaya nyaya gharba dvija huta huta bukthuma dumropa kante dwaram dwaram pravishto varamudara dari Puranaya Kshudharto Mani Pranaiha Sanado Napunaranudinam Tulya Kulyeshudinaha 
23. For the sake of filling the cavity of the stomach when hungry, a man of self-respect would wander from door to door with an earthen begging bowl in hand, having its edge covered with white cloth, away in extensive woodlands or holy places, the outskirts of which are grey all over with the smoke of sacrificial fires tended by brahmanas versed in ritualistic niceties, and thus preserve the pranas rather than live like a beggar from day to day among those who are socially equals. It should be remembered that living on arms for a man of true renunciation is held in high esteem in India, for no social merit can be higher than giving up the world for the sake of the national ideal of spirituality. Woodlands where recluses live, cover, etc. This seems to have been the custom to prevent the food from being seen by passers-by. Ganga Taranga Hima Shikara Shitalani Vidya Dharadyushita Charu Shilatalani Sthanani Kim Himavataha Pralayam Gatani Yatsava Mana Parapindarata Manushyaha 24. Ah, is it that those Himalayan solitudes, cooled by the spray of minute bits of Ganga's waves, and abounding in beautiful rocky flats, such as are the haunts of the Vidyadharas, are all engulfed in destruction, that men in disgrace hang on others for their maintenance. Kana and Shikar have much the same sense, for Kana some read him, meaning cold. The Vidyadharas are unearthly beings with superhuman skills in arts, especially music. Kim Kandaha Kandarebhyaha Pralaya Mupagata Nirghara Vaghiribhyaha Pradvasta Vatarubhyaha Sarasa Falabruto Valkalin Yascha Shaka Vikshante Yan Mukhani Prasabha Mapagata Prashrayanam Kalanam Dukhapta Svalpa Vittasmaya Pavana Vashanartita Brulatani 25. Or is it that herbs and roots have all disappeared from caves and streams, have gone away from hillsides, or that branches of trees bearing luscious fruits and yielding barks are all destroyed, that the faces of wretches, perfectly devoid of good breeding, are found to have their eyebrows dancing like creepers in the wind, of an arrogance which their scanty earning eked out with hardships engenders in them. Punyair mula falai sthada pranainim Bruttim Kurushvaduna Bhushayam Navapallavai Rakrupanai Ruttishta Yavo Vanam Shudrana Maviveka Muda Manasam Yatreshwaranam Sada Vitta Vyadi Vikara Vihwala Giram Nama Pinashruyate twenty six. Therefore, now accepting fruits and roots ordained as sacred for the most enjoyable means of maintenance and so also the earth laid on with verdant leafy twigs for your bed oh rise let us repair to the forest where even the name is not heard of the ignoble rich whose minds are stultified by indiscretion and whose speech is constantly delirious with the maladies of wealth phalam svecha labhyam prativana makhedam kshatiruham Payahastane stane shishira maduram punya saritam Brutusparsha shaya sulalita lata pallavamayi Ahante santapam tadapi daninam dwari krupana. Twenty seven. Though fruits from trees are easily obtainable at will in every forest, though there is cool, refreshing drink in holy streams at various places, and soft bed made of tender twigs and creepers still alas men agreed with lucre undergo sorrows at the doors of the rich ye vartante dhanapati puraha prardhano dukha bhajo ye chalpatvam dadati vishayakshepa paryapta buddheh teshamantaha sfurita hasitam vasaranam smareyam dhyana chede shikiri kuhara grama shayya nishannaha twenty eight reposing on a bed of stone with a mountain cave during intervals of meditation well may i recollect with an inward smile the days of those afflicted through their perishance before the rich 
or of those grown mean through their minds being content with seeking enjoyments if this verse is read differently with vardante for vartante and vasaranam for vasarani the idea becomes in the words of mr telling the suppliant of the rich thinks the days too long as he has to suffer the trouble of constant entreaties often unsuccessful the person engaged in the pursuit of worldly objects thinks time too short he has never enough of it to compass all his numerous ends on the other hand the philosopher laughs at both for their delusions in the case ye in lines one and two refer to days and for paryapta in line two we have to read paryasta too ye santosha nirantara pramudita stesham na bhinna mudo ye tvanye dhana lubdha sankuladi astesham na trushna hata iddham kasya krute krutah savidina tadruk padam sampadam swatmanye va samapta hema mahima merurna merochate 29 the felicity of those whom contentment unceasingly makes happy is not interrupted while cravings of those of greedy and confounded minds are never quenched such being the case for whom did the creator create the meru representing inconceivable wealth but confining to itself the glorious potency of its gold i would not covet it kasya krute krutah etc the idea is that meru the fabled mountain of gold serves no useful purpose to anybody and so i would not go in for it name rochate because those that are contented feel quite happy without possessing it and those that hunger after wealth never feel satisfied howsoever big might be their acquisitions swatman yeva samapta hema mahima its gold serves only to glorify itself but not to satisfy the greedy bikshahara madainya mup apratisukam bhitichidam sarvato durmatsarya madhabimana madanam dukhauga vidvamsanam sarvatranvah maprayatna sulabham sadu priyam pavanam shambhoh satram avarya makshaya nidim shamsanti yogishwara 30 the great yogis describe food which begging brings as follows it does not humiliate white verse number 23 it is an independent pleasure that is not dependent on the pleasure of earning money fulfilling social duty etc it is in all respects free from any anxious fear that is about one's expenditure food stores etc it destroys wicked pride egotism and impatience it eradicates the manifold evils of worldly existence it is easily available anywhere any day without efforts it is the beloved of the holy men it is a purification by itself it is like the inexhaustible feeding house of shiva access to which none can prevent end of chapter 3 condemnation of the poverty of supplicant attitude recording by uday sagar chapter 4 of vairagya satakam by bhartruhari translated by swami madhavananda this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by uday sagar delineation of the evanescence of enjoyments bhoge rogha bhayam kule chuti bhayam vitte rupalad bhayam mane dhainya bhayam bale ripu bhayam rupe jaraya bhayam shastre vadi bhayam गुणे खल भयम काये कृता सर्व वस्तु भयानी भुविनृना वैराग्यमे वाभम थर्टी वन इन एंजॉयमेंट देर इज द फियर ऑफ डिजीज इन सोशल पोजिशन द फियर ऑफ फॉलिंग ऑफ इन वेल्थ द फियर ऑफ हॉस्टाइल किंग्स इन ऑनर द फियर ऑफ ह्यूमिलिएशन इन पावर द फियर ऑफ एनिमीज इन ब्यूरी द फियर ऑफ ओल्ड एज in scriptural erudition the fear of opponents in virtue the fear of traducers in body the fear of death all the things of this world pertaining to man are attended with fear renunciation alone stands for fearlessness akrantam maranena janma jarasa chatyujvalam yauvanam santosho dhanalipsaya shamasukam praudhangana vibramai 
ಲೋಕೈರ್ಮತ್ಸರಿಭಿರ್ಗುಣಾ ವನಭುವೋ ವ್ಯಾಲೈರ್ನೃಪಾದುರ್ಜನೈ ರಸ್ತರ್ಯೇನ ವಿಭೂತಯೋ ಪ್ಯುಪಹತ ಗ್ರಸ್ತಂ ನ ಕಿಂ ಕೇನ ವಾ ಥರ್ಟಿ ಟೂ ಬರ್ತ್ ಇಸ್ ಪ್ರೈಡ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ಲಿಟ್ರಲಿ ಅಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ಬೈ ಡೆತ್ ಬ್ರಿಲಿಯಂಟ್ ಯೂತ್ ಬೈ ಓಲ್ಡ್ ಏಜ್ ಕಂಟೆಂಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಬೈ ಗ್ರೀಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿನೆಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ ಬೈ ದ ವೇಲ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಗೇ ವುಮೆನ್ ವರ್ಚ್ಯೂಸ್ ಬೈ ಜೆಲಸಿ ಆಫ್ ಮೆನ್ ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಟ್ರ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಬೈ ಬೀಸ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರೇ ಕಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಬೈ ದ ವಿಕೆಟ್ ಇನ್ ಕೌನ್ಸಿಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪವರ್ಸ್ ಈವನ್ ಆರ್ ವಿಶಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ಬೈ ದರ್ ಎವನೆಸೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಅನ್ ಅರ್ತ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಸೀಸ್ಡ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ಬೈ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಎಲ್ಸ್ ಆದಿವ್ಯಾಧಿ ಶತೈರ್ಜನಸ್ಯ ವಿವಿಧೈರಾರೋಗ್ಯ ಮುನ್ಮೂಲ್ಯತೆ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀರ್ಯತ್ರ ಪತಂತಿ ತತ್ರ ವಿವೃತ ದ್ವಾರ ಇವ ವ್ಯಾಪದ ಜಾತಂ ಜಾತಮವಶ್ಯಮಾಶು ವಿವಶಂ ಮೃತ್ಯು ಕರೋತ್ಯಾತ್ಮಸಾತ್ ತತ್ ಕಿಂ ತೇನ ನಿರಂಕುಶೇನ ವಿಧಿನಾ ಯುನ್ನಿರ್ಮಿತ ಸುಸ್ಥಿರಂ ಥರ್ಟಿ ತ್ರೀ ಹೆಲ್ತ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೆನ್ ಇಸ್ ಡೆಸ್ಟ್ರಾಯ್ಡ್ ಲಿಟ್ರಲಿ ರೂಟೆಡ್ ಔಟ್ ಬೈ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ವೇರಿಡ್ ಎಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ವೆರ್ ಎವರ್ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀ ದ ಗಾಡಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರಾಸ್ಪೆರಿಟಿ ದೇರ್ ಪೆರಿಲ್ಸ್ ಫೈಂಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಓಪನ್ ಆಕ್ಸೆಸ್ ಡೆತ್ ಶ್ಯೂರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಕ್ಸೆಸ್ ಟು ಇಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ರೆಂಡ್ರಿಂಗ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ವೆರಿ ಸೂನ್ ವಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಇಸ್ ಬಾರ್ನ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ದೆನ್ ವಾರ್ ಇಸ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ಆ ಸ್ಟೇಬಲ್ ಬೈ ದಿ ಅಬ್ಸಲ್ಯೂಟ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟರ್ ಭೋಗಾ ಸ್ಥುಂಗ ತರಂಗ ಭಂಗ ತರಲಾ ಪ್ರಾಣ ಕ್ಷಣಧ್ವಂಸಿ ಸ್ಥೋಕಾನ್ಯವ ದಿನಾನಿ ಯೌವನ ಸುಖಸ್ಫೂರ್ತಿ ಪ್ರಿಯಾಸು ಸ್ಥಿ ತತ್ ಸಂಸಾರ ಸಾರಮೇವ ನಿಖಿಲ ಬುಧ್ವಾ ಬುಧಾ ಬೋಧಕ ಲೋಕಾನುಗ್ರಹ ಪೇಶಲೇನ ಮನಸ ಯತ್ನ ಸಮಾಧೀಯತ ಥರ್ಟಿ ಫೋರ್ ಎಂಜಾಯ್ಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಅನ್ಸ್ಟೇಬಲ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದ ಬ್ರೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಹೈ ಬಿಲೌಸ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಇಸ್ ಲಾಯಬಲ್ ಟು ಸ್ಪೀಡಿ ಡಿಸಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ದ ಬಾಯನ್ಸಿ ಆಫ್ ಯೂತ್ಫುಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿನೆಸ್ ಸೆಂಟರ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಆರ್ ಆಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಲವ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಫ್ಯೂ ಡೇಸ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ದ ಹೋಲ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಅನ್ಸಬ್ಸ್ಟಾನ್ಶಿಯಲ್ ye wise teachers of men with minds intent of benefiting mankind by living exemplary lives put forth your energies for attaining the highest beatitude lokanugraha peshalena manasa lokanam of men anugrahe for the benefiting out of kindness peshalam attached the sense is that out of sympathy for suffering mankind you shall by your exemplary lives and your counsels show men the way to cross the ocean of samsara world bhoga mega vitana madhya vilasat sauda mani chanchala ayur vayu vigatti tabja patali leenambu vad bhanguram lola yavana lalasa sthanu bruta mitya kalaiya drutam sthanu bruta mitya kalaiya drutam yoge dhairya samadhi siddhi sulabhe buddhim vidadvam budah 35 enjoyments of embodied beings are fleeting like the quick play of lightning within a mass of clouds life is as insecure as a drop of water attached to the edge of a lotus leaf and dispersed by the wind the desires of youth are unsteady realizing these quickly let the wise firmly fix their minds in yoga easily attainable by patience and equanimity ayu kallola lolam katipaya divasasthayini yauvana ಶ್ರೀರರ್ಧ ಸಂಕಲ್ಪಕಲ್ಪ ಘನ ಸಮಯ ತಟಿಭ್ರಮ ಭೋಗಪೂಗಾ ಕಂಠಾಶ್ಲೇಷೋಪಗೂಢಂ ತದಿ ಚ ನ ಚಿರಂ ಯತ್ ಪ್ರಿಯಾವ ಪ್ರಣೀತ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ಯಾಸಕ್ತ ಚಿತ್ತಾಭವತ ಭವಭಯಾಂಬೋಧಿ ಪಾರಂ ತರೀತು ತರ್ಟಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಇಸ್ ಚೇಂಜಿಂಗ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಅ ಬಿಗ್ ವೇವ್ ಬ್ಯೂರಿ ಆಫ್ ಯೂತ್ ಅಬೈಟ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅ ಫ್ಯೂ ಡೇಸ್ earthly possessions are as transient as thought the whole series of our enjoyments are like occasional flashes of lightning during the monsoons the embrace round the neck given by our beloved ones lingers only for a while to cross the ocean of the fear of the world attach your mind to brahman bhava bhaya the great fear of finding yourself bound by the world attended with so many afflictions and yet finding no way out of it ಕೃಚ್ರೆ ನ ಮೇಧ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯೆ ನಿಯಮಿತ ತನುಭಿ ಸ್ಥೀಯತೆ ಗರ್ಭವಾಸೆ ಕಾಂತ ವಿಶ್ಲೇಷ ದುಃಖ ವ್ಯತಿಕರ ವಿಷಮೋ ಯೌವನೆ ಚೋಪಭೋಗ ವಾಕ್ಷೀ ನ ಮವಜ್ಞಾ ವಿಹಸಿತ ವಸತಿರ್ವೃದ್ಧ ಭಾವೋಪ್ಯ ಸಾಧು ಸಂಸಾರೆ ರೇ ಮನುಷ್ಯ
in the womb man lies with an impure matter and discomfort with limbs cramped in youth enjoyment is tainted with the intense suffering of mental distraction arising from separation from our beloved even old age is undesirable being the object of contemptible laughter from women then o oh, men say if there is a particle of happiness in the world the idea is that none of the stages of life beginning from the embryo are worth living as they are attended with serious drawbacks vyagriva tishtati jara paritarjayanti rogascha shatrava iva praharanti deham ayu parisravati bhinna ghata vambo lokasthada lokasthada pyahita macharati ti chitram 38 old age looms ahead frightening men like a tigress different diseases afflict the human body like enemies life is flowing away like water running out of a leaky vessel still how surprising is it that man goes on doing wicked deeds bhoga bhangura vruttayo bahuvida sthaireva chayam bhava tatkasyeha krute paribramata re lokah utam cheshti taih asha pasha shatopa shanti vishadam cheta samadhiyatam kamotpatti vashat swadamani yadi shraddheya masmadvachah 39 manifold and transitory in nature are the enjoyments and of such is this world made up so what for would you wander about here o oh men cease exerting yourselves for them and if you put faith in your word on its supreme foundation literally abode concentrate your mind purified by quelling hope with its hundred meshes and freed from its liability to create desire kamot patti vashat we accept this reading as found in the edition we translate from but we do not follow the meaning given of it by the commentator buddhendra he makes the expression qualify the verb concentrate explaining calm as anurag or love his meaning thus becomes swayed by the development of love or bhakti literally turned away from the sway wash of the rise of desires enjoyments are transitory individually and exhaustible collectively so we are in a never ending wild goose chase which brings in turns stimulation and grief desire produces this terrible entanglement and hope keeps it on therefore don't exert yourself for these enjoyments but freeing your mind from hope and desire set it high on its supreme goal this is the argument another reading seems to be kamo chittivash which means attainable by uprooting desires brahmendradi marudganam trunakana nyatra stito manyate yatsvadha dvirasa bhavanti vibhava strailokya rajyadaya bhogah kopi sa ek eva paramo nityodito jhrumbate bho sadho kshana bangure taditare bhoge ratim ma krudah 40 there is one enjoyment and one alone lasting immutable and supreme of which the taste renders tasteless the greatest possessions such as the sovereignty of three worlds and established in which a brahma indra or the gods that is their positions appear like the particles of grass do not o oh sadhu set your heart on any ephemeral enjoyment other than that end of chapter 4 delineation of the evanescence of enjoyments recording by uday sagar of enjoyments chapter 5 of vairagya satakam by bhartru hari translated by swami madhavananda this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by uday sagar description of the working of time or the principle of change saramya nagari mahan sanrupati hi samanta chakram chatat parshve tasya cha sa vidagdha parishatta chandra bimbanana udvrutta sa raja putra nivah vandina stah kadah sarvam yasya vashadaga smruti padam kalaya tasmai namah 41 that lovely city that grand monarch and that circle of feudatory kings at his side that cabinet of shrewd counselors of his and those beauties with moon like faces that group of wayward princes those court ministers 
and their songs of praise, under whose power all this fleeted away and became objects of memory to that kala, time, or the principle of change, salutation. Yatra nekaha kvachidapi gruhe tatra tishta chadaiko yatra pyeka stadanu bahavas tatra naiko pichante idham che maurajani divasau dolayam dvavivakshau kalaha kalyobhuvana phalake kridati pranisharehi 42. Where in some home or a square in the case of a checkerboard there once were many there is now one and where there was one or many successively there is none at the end of the game this is the process in which expert kala plays his game on the checkerboard of this world with living beings as the pieces to be moved and casting the two dice of day and night adityasya gata gatai raha raha sankshiyate jivitam vyaparair bahu karya bhara Gurubihi kalo navignayate drushtva janma jara vipatti maranam trasascha notpadyate pitva mohamayim pramada mudira munmatta bhutam jagat. 43. Daily, with the rising and setting of the sun, life shortens, and time, that is its flight, is not felt on account of affairs heavily burdened with manifold activities. Neither is fear produced at beholding birth, death, old age, and sufferings. Alas, the world has become mad by drinking the stupefying wine of delusion. Ratri saiva punaha sa eva divaso matva mudha jantavo dhavan chudyamina stadaiva nibruta prarabdha tattatriyaha vyaparaihi punarukta bhuta vishayairittam vide namuna samsarena khadarthitha vayamaho maho nalajja mahe 44. Seeing even the same night, to be ever following the same day, in vain do creatures run on their worldly course, perseveringly and busy with various activities set a-going secretly, that is, by individual mental results. Alas, through infatuation we do not feel ashamed at being thus befalled by this samsara life with occupations in which the same particulars repeat themselves. The idea is how profoundly deluded by desire we live, for never growing old itself it makes all things look fresh and new, otherwise no worldly pursuit has any real novelty. There are as tale as the uniform appearance of day and night following each other. Nadhyatam padamishvarasya vidivat samsara vichittaye svargadvara kavata patana paturdhar mopi no parjitaha nari pina payodharoru yugalam svapnepi nalingitam matuhu kevala meva yauvana vanachede kutara vayam 45. Nadhyatam etc. The feet of the Lord have not been meditated upon by me in due form for the sake of doing away with this samsara or worldly bondage. Svargadvara, etc. Neither has dharma, merit through performance of religious duties, been earned, such as is strong to knock open the gates of heaven. Matruhu kevala meva, etc. We have simply proved to be hatchets, as it were, to cut down the garden of our mother's youth. That is, we have simply made our mother age through giving birth to us. That is the only result we find worthy of mention. Nabhyasta prativadi brunda damani vidya vinito chita khadga graihi karikumba pita dalanairnakam nanitam yashaha kanta komala phalla vadara rasaha Pito Nachandro Daye Tarunyam Gatameva Nishfala Maho Shunyala Ye Deepavat 46. Nabhyasta, etc. The proper scholarship for a cultured man, such as enables one to defeat hosts of disputants, has not been acquired, Khadaga Grau, etc. By the point of the sword, strong to knock down the capacious temples of elephants, fame has not been carried to heaven. 
tarunyam etc useless has youth passed away like a lamp in a deserted house vidya nadhikata kalankarahita vittam chanoparjitam shushrushapi samahitena manasa pitrorna sampadita alolayata lochanaha priyatamaha svapne pinalingata kaloyam parapinda lolupataya akairiva prerita 47 vidya nadhikata etc knowledge free from defect has not been mastered kalankarahita means free from doctrines incapable of proof vittam cha etc riches neither have been earned shushru shapi etc services to parents have not been rendered with single mindedness kaloyam etc like crows all the time has been passed in greediness for food that is maintenance obtainable from others these three stanzas number 45 46 47 strike a rather anomalous note here the poet personates a man whose life has been like the lamp burning in a deserted abode a thorough failure such a man is looking back on his youthful years of unmitigated worthlessness but are the reflections he is making here typical of those who are at the threshold of true renunciation by no means they are typical poet here simply takes up a particular case of an aspirant after renunciation which may serve his poetical purposes best this aspirant has had in his youth no taste of glory either as a pious man a dutiful son a scholarly student a brave warrior or a lover of women he appears to lament here that none of the fourfold aim of human life dharma religious merit artha wealth kama fulfillment of desires and moksha liberation has been pursued by him in the past with the slightest success perhaps he means that is best calculated to impress on his mind the vanity of all the ends of a householder's life but this impression of vanity and consequent non-attachment may very well come and come with perhaps greater completeness to men who had the ability to succeed in life and such men may not at all look back with any lingering regret on enjoyments they are going to leave behind whether their harvest had been actually reaped by them or not there is even some inconsistency in the ring of regret running through these stanzas but the poet is here more concerned with the dramatic effect than psychological precision vayam yebhyo jataschira parigata eva khalute sayam yaiha samruddha smruti vishayatam te pi gamitah idani me te smruhu prati divasa ma sanna patana गता स्थूल्यावस्था सिखथिल नदी थीर थरुभि फॉर्टी एट दोस फ्रॉम हूम वी व बॉर्न वेल दे आर नाउ ऑन इंटीमेट फूरिंग विथ इटर्निटी लॉन्ग डेड दोस विथ हूम वी व ब्रॉड अप हैव ऑल्सो बिकम ऑब्जेक्ट्स ऑफ मेमोरी नाउ दैट वी हैव बिकम ओल्ड वी आर अप्रोचिंग नियर टू आर फॉल डे बाई डे आर कंडीशन बींग कंपेरेबल to the out of trees on the sandy bank of a river chira parichitah a simpler reading is chira parigatah ayur varsha shatam runam parimitam ratrau tadardham gatam tasyardasya parasya chardam aparam balatva vruddhatva yoh shesham vyadi viyoga dukkha sahitam सेवादि सेवादिर्नीयते जीवे वारी तरंग चंचल तरे सौख्यम कुतः प्राणी नाम फॉरी नाइन द लाइफ ऑफ मैन एज अडेन्ड इज लिमिटेड टू वन हंड्रेड इयर्स हाफ ऑफ इट इज स्पेंड इन नाइट एंड आउट ऑफ द अदर हाफ वन हाफ अगेन इज पास इन चाइल्डहुड एंड ओल्ड एज एंड द रेस्ट विच हैज इट्स इलनेस बेरीमेंट्स एंड ट्रबल्स इज स्पेंड इन सर्विंग अदर्स what happiness can there be for mortals in a life again which is even more uncertain than the ripples on the surface of water kshanam balo bhutva kshanam payuva kama rasikah kshanam vithairinah kshanam api cha sampurna vibhavah jara jirnai rangair nata iva bali mandita tanur narah samsarante vishati yamadhani yavanikam 50 
now a child for a while, and then a youth of erotic ways, a destitute now for a while, and then very wealthy, just like an actor man makes at the end of his role, when diseased in all limbs by age and wrinkled all over the body, his exit behind the scene that veils the abode of Yama, death. End of chapter 5 Description of the Working of Time or the Principle of Change Recording by Uday Sagar Chapter 6 of Vairagya Satakam by Bhartru Hari Translated by Swami Madhavananda This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Uday Sagar A Comparison as to how a monk stands to a king. Tvam raja vayamapyu pasita guru pragnabi manonnataah Kyatastvam vibhavairya shamsi kavayo dikshu pratan vantinaha Itham manadhanati dura mubayo rapyavayo rantaram Yadyasmasu parang mukosi vayamapye kantato nispruhah 51 Thou art a king. We too are elevated through self-assurance about our wisdom acquired from our preceptor whom we served. Thou art celebrated through thy possessions. Our fame is spread abroad in all quarters by learned men. Thus a great difference there is between us both, made by honor and riches. If thou art cold towards us, we too are perfectly indifferent towards thee. The sloka is addressed by a yati, one who has renounced the world, to a king. The yati wants to inform the king of the vanity of his possessions, and so is declaring that a yati is greater than a king. For the king is rich in wealth only, but he is rich in wisdom, which should command even the respect of a king. For manadhanati duram, another reading is manadhanati duram which may be rendered thus, Not much difference, O proud king. Ardha na mi shishe tvam vayamapi chagira mishmahe yavadardham shurastvam vadi darpa vyupashamana vidavakshayam patavam naha sevante tvam dhanadya mati malahataye mamapi shrotuka ma maya pyasta Nate chetvai mamanita rameva rajanna nasta. 52. Thou exercisest kingly powers over riches. We do the same over words, that is, ideas or scriptures, in all their senses. Thou art a hero in battle, while we have never failing skill in methods of subduing the pride of disputants. It is the rich who serve thee. While intent on learning higher truths, men serve us to have all imperfections of mind destroyed. If thou hast no regard for me, well, O king, I have absolutely none for thee. Vayamiha paritushta valkalaistvam dukulaihi sama iha paritosho nirvishesho visheshaha satu bhavatu dharidro yasya trushna vishala manasicha paritushte khordavan khodaritraha 53 here we are satisfied with the bark of trees and thou with rich garments and yet our contentment is alike so the distinction makes no difference poor indeed is he whose desires are boundless if the mind be contented who is rich and who poor one who is satisfied with what little he possesses is as good as the rich. Fala mala mashanaya swadu panaya toyam kshitirapi shayanadham vasase valkalamcha navadhana madupana bhranta sarvendriyana mavinaya manumantum notsahe durjananam. 54. Fruits for food, tasteful water for drink bare ground to lie upon barks of trees for clothing are sufficient for us i cannot bring myself to approve of the misbehavior of evil men whose senses are led astray 
by drinking the wine of newly acquired wealth. Ashni Mahivayam Viksha Mashavaso Vasi Mahi Shai Mahi Mahi Prushte Kurvi Mahi Kimishwarai. Fifty five. Let us eat the food we have begged. Let the sky be our clothing. Let us lie down on the surface of the earth. What have we to do with the rich? Asha, the four quarters. Nanata, Navita, Nagayaka, Nacha Sabheta Ravada, Chunchavaha. Drupa Mikshitu, Matra Kevayam, Stanabhara, Namita, Nayoshitaha. 56. Who are we to go to see a king? Not dancers, court jesters, or singers, nor experts in learned disputes with others in a court, nor youthful court mistresses. That is, we have absolutely no business to go to a king. Davita is generally a parasite of a prince. Vipula hrudayair dhanyaihi kaishchijja gajja nitampura vidruta maparair dattam chanyair vijitya trunam yadaha ihahi bhuvananyan yair di rascha turdasha bhunjate katipaya puraswamye pumsam ka esha madajwaraha 57. In ancient times, the kingdom of this world was created by some large-hearted monarchs. By some was it sustained, that is ruled, and by others was it conquered and given away like straw. Even now some heroes enjoy the fourteen divisions of the world. Now what then is this feverish pride of men having sovereignty over a few towns only? Chaturdasha Bhuvanani the fourteen divisions of the world, that is the entire created universe. Abukthayam yasyam kshanamapi nayatam rupashatair bhuva vastasya abhe ka iva bahumanaha kshiti brutam tadam shasyapyam she tadavaya le shepi patayo vishade kartavye vidadhati jadaha pratyutamudam. Fifty-eight. What high dignity, alas, is there for kings in gaining that earth which has never for a moment been left unenjoyed by hundreds of rulers? The stupid owners of even a shred of the limb of a fraction of its fraction, that is of the most minute particle, feel delighted, whereas on the contrary they ought to grieve. Mrutpindo jala rekhaya valayataha sarvopyayam Nanvanuhu Swamshi Krutya Sa Eva Tam Yuga Shatai Ragnam Ganair Bhujate Ye Dadyur Dadato Dhava Kimaparam Kshudra Daridra Brusham Digdiktan Purushadaman Dhanakanan Van Chanti E Fifty nine It the earth is but a lump of clay circled by a ring of water. Even the whole of it is but a particle. Hosts of kings, having partitioned it after fighting hundreds of battles, enjoy it. What is so strange if these very poor, insignificant persons may or do give some parts of it, but downright shame on those mean fellows who would beg bits of coin from even them, may or do give, to indulge in a bit of self-gratification. Sajataha kopya sinmadana ripuna murndi davalam Kapalam yasyo chairvi nihita malankara vidaye nrubihi prana trana pravana matibihi kaishchida dhuna namadbihi kaha pumsa maya matula darpa jvara bharaha. 60. That man is indeed born truly great, whose white skull after death is placed by Siva, the enemy of Madana, Cupid, high on the head as an ornament, and what is worth this rising fever of exceeding pride in men who are nowadays adored by some people with minds intent on the preservation of their lives the great siva is called kapali kapala means skull the popular belief is that he puts on his head the skull of a hero whose wonderful life live on earth merits this distinction End of chapter six a comparison as to how a monk stands to a king. Recording by Uday Sagar.
Chapter Seven of Vairagya Setakam by Bhatru Hari, translated by Swami Madhavananda. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Uday Sagar. Control of mind by stimulating wisdom in it. Paresham chetamsi prati divasa maradhya baudha prasadam kimne tum vishasi hrudaya klesha kalitam. Prasanne Tvayanta Swayamudita Chinta Mani Guno Vivikta Sankalpaha Kimabilashitam Pushyati Nate 61. Why, O heart, dost thou set thyself on winning good graces so hard to secure by daily propitiating other men's minds in various ways? When being serene inwardly and free from society, thou hast gems of thought rising above themselves, that is, when desires do not induce your thinking, what objects mere wish even would not bring to thee? The idea would come out more clearly if we read as many have done, Klesha Kalilam and Chintamani Gunaha. The first expression would then mean a chaotic mass of troubles, instead of hard to secure, and the verb vishasi would have its primary sense of entering into svaya mudita chintamani gunaha would then mean having the virtue of a philosopher's stone developed of itself in thee, that is, praptihi, one of the eight yogic powers, viviktaha, we prefer to render as free from the company of others, a state opposed to what is implied when we have to depend on others for gratifying our desires. Paribrahmasi kim rudha kvachana chitta vishram yatam svayam bhavati yadyadha bhavati tathada nanyadha atita mananu smaranna picha bhavya sankalpa yanna tarkita samagamanu bhavami bhoganaham 62 why dost thou, my mind, wander about in vain, rest thyself somewhere? Whatever happens in a particular way, happens so by itself, and not otherwise. So, not thinking over the past, nor resolving about the future, I realize enjoyments that come without engaging my thoughts. Etas madhviramendri yardha gahana Dayasaka dashraya shreyo margamashesha dukha shamana vyapara daksham kshanat swatmi bhava mupaihi santyaja nijam kallola lolam gatim mabuyo bhaja bhanguram bhavaratim chetaha prasidha dhuna 63 desist o heart from the troublesome labyrinth of sense objects Take the path of highest good, which is capable of bringing about in a moment the destruction of endless troubles. Get thee to the state of thy Atman. Give up thy stream-like agitated flux. Be calm now, and never again seek transient worldly attachments. Moham Marjaya Tamu Parjaya Ratim Chandrarda Chuda Manau Chetaha Swarga Tarangini Tatabuva Masanga Mangi Kuru Kova Vijishu Budbadeshu Chathadille Kasu Chastrishu Cha Jwala Greshu Chapanna Geshu Chasaridve Geshu Chapratyayaha 64. Clear off delusion and earn devotion to him whose crown is begemmed with the crescent. O oh, my mind! Accept attachment to some spot on the banks of the celestial river Ganga. What reliability is there on waves or bubbles, flashes of lightning or smiles of fortune in the tongues of flame, serpents or hosts of friends? Chetas chintaya maramam sakrudi mamastayini mastaya bhupala brukuti kuti viharana vyapara panyanganam Kandha Kanchukitaha Pravishya Bhavana Dwarani Varanasi Radhya Pantishu 
Pāṇipātra-patitāṁ-bhikṣāma-pekṣāma-he. 65. Oh, my mind, never for a while earnestly think of the frail goddess of fortune, whose business is to sell herself away while moving in her haunt, namely the wrinkle of a king's brow. That is, the bargain is struck by the smile or the frown of kings. Let us clothe ourselves in ragged garments, and entering the doors of houses in the streets of Varanasi, wait for the arms to be placed in the receptacle of our hands. Agre gītam sarasa kavayaha parśva yordha kshinātyaha paschāli lāvalaya ranitam chāmara grahini nām yadhyastevam rubhava rasa svādhane lampatatvam noche chetaha pravisha sahasa nirvikalpe samādhau 66. If there are songs going on before you, Sweet, skilful poets from the south by your side, and the tinkling of the moving bracelets of female waiters with waving chowries in their hands, then lavishly attach thyself to the enjoyment of worldly happiness. If otherwise, O oh my mind, then plunge into the absolute type of meditation, nirvikalpa samadhi, the deepest concentration, losing all separate consciousness of the knower, the known, and the knowing. Chamara is the bushy tail of a yak used as a fan, being one of the insignia of royalty. The argument in the sloka is that if you can find only enjoyment everywhere, you may enjoy, but really such enjoyment cannot be found in this world of misery. All worldly pleasures are transient and limited, for in the next sloka we find that the author is preaching the uselessness of the fulfillment of worldly desires. Praptaha Shriyaha Sakala Kama Dufu Sthitaha Kim Nyastam Padam Shirasi Vidvishatam Tataha Kim Sampaditaha Pranayino Vibhavai Stataha Kim Kalpam Stitha Stanu Brutam Tanubi Stataha Kim 67. Though embodied beings may obtain that prosperity from which all desires are milked, what then? What if their feet be placed on the heads of their enemies? Or what if their wealth brings friends? Or if their bodies endure till the end of the creative cycle? Bhaktir bhave marana janma bhayam rudistam neho nabandushu namanmadhaja vikara samsarga dosha rahita vijana vanamta vairagya masti kimitaha paramardaniyam 68. When there is devotion for Shiva, as also fear of birth and death in the heart, no attachment for family, no excitement of sexual passions, when there is the solitude of forest depths, unsullied by the company of worldly men, and there is renunciation, what better, then, is to be wished for? Tasma dananta majaram paramam vikasi tad brahma chintaya ki mebi rasad vikalpaihi yasyanu shangina ime bhuvanadipatya bhogadayaha krupana loka mata bhavanti 69. What avails all this agitating over the unreal? Meditate therefore on that supreme, infinite, ageless, effulgent Brahman in the light of which all such enjoyments as the sovereignty of the world appear as the desires of pitiable men. Patala ma vishasi yasinabho vilangya digmandalam brahmasi manasa chapa lena prantyapi jatu vimalam khadamatmaninam tad brahma nasmarasi nirvruti neshi yena. 70. Being thus agitated, O mind, thou now descendest into the nether regions, now soarest up beyond the skies and wanderest all around the four quarters why even by mistake thou dost not once concentrate on that brahman of the nature of self and bereft of all imperfections whereby you may attain supreme bliss atmaninam means belonging to self as the real state of self is brahman the other reading atmalinam would mean submerged in self being its substance or reality. End of chapter seven.
control of mind by stimulating wisdom in it. Recording by Uday Sagar. Chapter 8 of Vairagya Satakam by Bhartruhari. Translated by Swami Madhavananda. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Uday Sagar. Discrimination of the immutable reality from the mutable. Kim Vedaihi Smritibihi Purana Patanaihi Shastra Maho Vistaraihi Swarga Grama Kuti Nivasa Faladaihi Karma Kriya Vibra Maihi Muktvaikam Bhava Dukha Bara Rachana Vidvamsa Kalanalam Swatmananda Pada Pravesha Kalanam Sheshair Vani Gruttibihi Seventy one. What are worth the Vedas, the Smritis, the readings from the Puranas, the vast Sastras, or the mazes of ceremonials, which give us, as the fruits, a resting place in heaven, which is, as it were, a village dispersed with huts? All else is but the bargaining of traders, except that one way which admits one into the state of supreme bliss in oneself and which is like the final destructive fire to consume the evolving mass of worldly miseries the sastras by which are meant here logic grammar etc and the six systems of philosophy are said to be vast because of the amplitude of comment illustration and argument with which the doctrines have been developed yato meru shri manni patati yugantagni valitaha Samudraha Shushyanti Prachura Makara Graha Nilayaha Dhara Gachatyantam Dharani Dhara Padaira Pidruta Sharire Kavartha Karikalabha Karnagra Chapale 72. Seeing that, when set all over with the fires of cyclic destruction, the stately mountain Meru topples down, the seas which are the abode of numerous sharks and aquatic animals are dried up and the earth itself comes to an end though held firm by the feet of mountains what to speak of this body which is as unsteady as the tip of the ear of a young elephant dharanidhara according to hindu mythology the mountains are regarded as the supporters of the earth yugantagni the cosmic conflagration at the end of a cycle Gatram Sankuchitam Gatir Vigalita Brashta Chad Danta Valir Drushtir Nashati Vardhate Bhadirata Vaktram Chalalayate Vakyam Nadriyate Chabhandava Jano Bharya Nashushrushate Ha Kashtam Purushasya Jirna Vayasaha Putropya Mitrayate Seventy three in old age the body becomes shriveled the gait becomes unsteady the teeth fall out the eyesight is lost deafness increases the mouth slavers relatives do not value one's words the wife does not nurse and even the son turns hostile oh the misery of a man of worn-out age varnam sitam shirasi viksha shiro ruhanam sthanam jara bharibhavasya tada pumamsam aropithasti shakalam parihrutya yanti chandala kupamiva durataram tarunyaha 74 seeing the gray hairs on the head of a man emblematic of discomfiture by old age youthful women at once fly away from him as if from a chandalas the untouchable in caste well whereon is placed a structure of bones aro pitasti shatakam may be taken to qualify pumamsam or kupam if it be taken to qualify the former it would mean this framework of bones meaning the old man it was a custom in former times with the chandalas to line their well with bones for ornamentation yavat svasthamidam sharira marujam Yavacha dure jara Yavat chendriya shakti raprati hata Yavat kshayo naishaha Atma shreyasi Tava deva vidusha Karyaha prayatno mahan 
ಸಂದೀಪ್ತೆ ಭವನೆ ತು ಕೂಪ ಖನನ ಪ್ರತ್ಯುದ್ಯಮ ಕೀದೃಶ ಸೆವೆಂಟಿ ಫೈವ್ ಆಸ್ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಆಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬಾರಿ ಇಸ್ ಫ್ರೀ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಡಿಸೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಿಕ್ರೆಪಿಟ್ಯೂರ್ ಆಸ್ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಆಸ್ ಸೆನ್ಯುಲರಿ ಇಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಸ್ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಆಸ್ ದ ಪವರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸೆನ್ಸಸ್ ಆರ್ ಅನ್ಎಫೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಡಿಕೇಯಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ಲಾಂಗ್ ವೈಸ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ಸ್ ಶುಡ್ ಪುಟ್ ಫಾರ್ತ್ ಮೈಟಿ ಎಕ್ಸರ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಸೇಕ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಗುಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಹೌಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಆನ್ ಫಾಯರ್ ವಾಟ್ ಅವೇಲ್ಸ್ ಸೆಟ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಡಿಗಿಂಗ್ ಅ ವೆಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ವಾಟರ್ ತಪಸ್ಯಂತ ಸಂತ ಕಿಮದಿ ವಸಾಮ ಸುರ ನದೀಂ ಗುಣೋದಾರಾನ್ ದಾರಾನುತ ಪರಿಚರಾಮ ಸವಿನಯ ಪಿಬಾಮ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರೌ ಫೂನುತ ವಿವಿಧ ಕಾವ್ಯಾಮೃತರಸಾನ್ ನವಿದ್ಮ ಕಿಂ ಕುರ್ಮ ಕತಿಪಯ ನಿಮೇಷಾಯುಷಿ ಜನೇ ಸೆವೆಂಟಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಶೆಲ್ ವಿ ಲಿವ್ ಬೈ ದ ಸೆಲೆಸ್ಟಿಯಲ್ ರಿವರ್ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟಿಸಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಚರಿಟೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಶೆಲ್ ವಿ ಅಮೇಬಲಿ ಸರ್ವ್ ಆರ್ ವೈಫ್ಸ್ ಗ್ರೇಸ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ವರ್ಚ್ಯೂಸ್ ಶೆಲ್ ವಿ ಡ್ರಿಂಕ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಕರಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಚರಲ್ ಲಿಟರೇಚರ್ ಆರ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಟಾರ್ ಆಫ್ ಡೈವರ್ಸ್ ಪೊಯಿಟಿಕಲ್ ಲಿಟರೇಚರ್ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ದ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಅವೆರಿ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಫ್ಯೂ ಟ್ವಿಂಕ್ಲಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಐ ವಿ ಡು ನಾಟ್ ನೋ ವಿಚ್ ಆಫ್ ದೀಸ್ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಟೇಕ್ ಧುರಾರಾಧ್ಯಾಶ್ಚಾಮಿ ತುರಗ ಚಲಚಿತ್ತ ಕ್ಷಿತಿಭುಜೋ ವಯಂ ತುಸ್ತುಲೇಚ್ಛಾ ಸುಮಹತಿ ಫಲೇ ಭದ್ದ ಮನಸ ಜರಾದೇಹಂ ಮೃತ್ಯುರ್ಹರತಿ ದೈತ ಜೀವಿತ ಸಖೇ ನಾನ್ಯಶ್ರೇಯೋ ಜಗತಿ ವಿದುಷೋನ್ಯತ್ರ ತಪಸ ಸೆವೆಂಟಿ ಸೆವೆನ್ ದೀಸ್ ರೂಲರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ಸ್ ರೆಸ್ಟ್ಲೆಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಎ ಹಾರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇ ಫೋರ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿಫಿಕಲ್ಟ್ ಟು ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ವೈಲ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಅಂಬಿಷಿಯಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ಸ್ ಪಿಚ್ಡ್ ಆನ್ ವಾಸ್ಟ್ ಗೇನ್ ಏಜ್ ಸ್ಟೀಲ್ಸ್ ಅವೇ ಬಾರಿಲಿ ಸ್ಟ್ರೆಂಥ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡೆತ್ ಕಟ್ ಶಾರ್ಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಡಿಯರ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಆ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಗುಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ವಾಯ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ದ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟಿಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಸ್ಚರಿಟೀಸ್ ಮಾನೇ ಮ್ಲಾಯಿನಿ ಖಂಡಿತೆ ಚ ವಸುನಿ ವ್ಯರ್ಥೆ ಪ್ರಯಾಥೇತ್ತಿನಿ ಕ್ಷೀಣೆ ಬಂಧುಜನೆ ಗತೆ ಪರಿಜನೆ ನಷ್ಟೆ ಶನೈರ್ಯವನೆ ಯುಕ್ತ ಕೇವಲ ಮೇತದೇವ ಸುಧಿಯಾಂ ಯಜ್ಜೌನು ಕನ್ಯಾಪಯ ಪೂತಾ ಗ್ರಾವಗಿರೀಂದ್ರ ಕಂದರ ತಟಿ ಕುಂಜೆ ನಿವಾಸ ಕ್ವಚಿತ್ ಸೆವೆಂಟಿ ಏಟ್ ವೆನ್ ಆನರ್ ಹಸ್ ಫೇಡೆಡ್ ವೆಲ್ತ್ ಹಸ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ರೂಯಿಂಡ್ ದೋಸ್ ಹು ಸೂ ಫಾರ್ ಫೇವರ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಡಿಸಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಡ್ವಿಂಡಲ್ ದ ವೇ ರಿಟೈನರ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಲೆಫ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯೂತ್ ಹಸ್ ಗ್ರಾಜುಲಿ ಡಿಕೇಡ್ ದೇರ್ ರಿಮೈನ್ಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಒನ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ವಾಯ್ಸ್ ರೆಸಿಡೆನ್ಸ್ somewhere in a grove on the side of a valley of the himalayas whose rocks are purified by the waters of the ganga jahnu kanya the ganga is so called on account of the myth that rishi jahnu drank it up and then disgorged it through his ear or thigh when in its course towards the bay of bengal from its descent from the heavens it overflowed the sacrificial platform of the rishi examination of the traditional place where the rishi is supposed to have lived in ancient times suggests the likelihood of the course of the river being obstructed by an extensive eminence with previous soil and of its delayed emergence on the other side ramya chandra mari chayas trunavati ramya vanantah stali ramyam sadu samagamagata sukham kavyeshu ramya kada ಕೋಪೋ ಪಾಹಿತ ಬಾಷ್ಪಬಿಂದು ತರಲಂ ರಮ್ಯಂ ಪ್ರಿಯಾಯ ಮುಖಂ ಸರ್ವಂ ರಮ್ಯಮ ನಿತ್ಯತಾಮುಪಗತೆ ಚಿತ್ತೆ ನ ಕಿಂಚಿತ್ ಪುನಃ ಸೆವೆಂಟಿ ನೈನ್ ಡಿಲೈಟ್ಫುಲ್ ಆರ್ ದ ರೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಮೂನ್ ಡಿಲೈಟ್ಫುಲ್ ದ ಗ್ರಾಸಿ ಪ್ಲಾಟ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಔಟ್ಸ್ಕರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಡಿಲೈಟ್ಫುಲ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಪ್ಲೆಜರ್ ಆಫ್ ವಾಯ್ಸ್ ಮೆನ್ ಸೊಸೈಟಿ ಡಿಲೈಟ್ಫುಲ್ ದ ನ್ಯಾರೇಟಿವ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಪೊಯಿಟಿಕಲ್ ಲಿಟರೇಚರ್ and delightful the face of the beloved swimming in the tear drops of faint anger everything is charming but nothing is so when the mind is possessed by the evanescence of things ramyam harmyatalam
Is not music with its accompaniments agreeable to listen to? Is not the society of women dear as life itself very pleasing? Yet wise men have gone away to the forest, regarding these things as unstable as the shadow of a lamp's flame flickering through the puff of the wings of a deluded moth. Brantha also means hovering. End of chapter 8 Discrimination of the Immutable Reality from the Mutable Recording by Uday Sagar Chapter 9 of Vairagya Satakam by Bhartruhari Translated by Swami Madhavananda This LibriVox recording is in the public domain Recording by Uday Sagar Worship of Shiva Asam sara tribuvana midam chinvatam tata tadruk naivas makam nayana padavim shrotra margam gatova yo yam datte vishaya karino gada guda vimana shiva syantha karana karinaha samyamalana lilam eri one o oh dear in your quest through the three worlds from the very beginning of the creation, none such as come within sight or hearing that can play the part of a controlling trap for the elephant of his mind when maddened by the mysterious, deep-rooted infatuation for the female elephant of sense object. Anaya is an elephant trap. Another reading is Alana, which means a tying post for an elephant. Kshibasya of the maddened yade tatsvachandam viharana makar panyamashanam saharyai samvasaha shrutu mupasha maika vratafalam mano mandaspandam bahirapi chirasyapi vimrushanna jane kasyaisha parinati rudarasya tapasaha edit two this freedom to wander about this food to which no meanness attaches, the company of holy men, the cultivation of Vedic wisdom, of which, unlike other woes, the only fruit is spiritual peace, the mind also restrained in its movements towards external things, to such a consummation, I know, not after lifelong reflection, what noble austerities may lead. Upashama is the cessation of the illusions, and so of the worries of the world. This is said to be the only fruit born by the pursuit of the zvo, namely, kshutam, or study of Vedic wisdom, other vows being ordained to bear fruits in the form of worldly prosperity. Jirna eva manoradascha hrudaye yatam cha tadyauvanam hantangeshu gunascha vandya falatam Yata gunagnair vina Kim yuktam sahasabhu paiti Balavan kala krutam tokshami Ha gnatam madananta krangi yugalam Muktvasti nanya gatihi 83. Desires have worn off in our heart. Alas, youth has also passed away from the body. The virtues have proved barren for want of appreciative admirers. The powerful, all-destroying, unrelenting death is fast hastening in. What is to be done? Ah, me! I see there is no other refuge left except the fear of the destroyer of Cupid. Madanantak, Siva is so called in allusion to his having turned the god Cupid to ashes on the eve of his marriage with Gauri. Maheshware va jagata madishware janardane va jagadanta ratmani navastubheda pratipatti rasti me tadhapi bhaktis tarunendu shikare. 84. I make no difference in substance between Siva, the lord of the universe, and Vishnu, the inmost self of the universe, but still my devotion is attached to the one in whose crest there is the crescent moon. This sloka has been brought forward by the poet 
as a doubt may arise in the mind from the preceding sloka where the poet says that siva is the only law to take refuge in here the poet says that really there is no difference between siva and vishnu but he is by nature attached to siva this is what is called istanista or the devotion to one's own ideal the word janardana has been variously derived the verb ardha meaning both destroying and protecting if the former meaning be taken then the word would mean slayer of the janas demons living in the sea jagadanta ratmani this word has been variously interpreted first the inmost self of the universe second one who is the knower of all inner things in the universe third one who is the self of all in the universe or it may mean fourth in whose self is the whole universe svurat swara jyotsna dhavalita tale kwapi puline sukasi naha shanta dvanisu rajanishu dyusaritaha bhavabho godvignaha shiva shiva shive tyucha vachasaha kada syamanandodgata bahula bashpa plutadrushaha eighty five sitting in a peaceful posture during nights when all sounds are stilled into silence somewhere on the banks of the heavenly river which shines with the white glow of the bright diffused moonlight and fearful of the miseries of birth and death crying aloud shiva 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 ah when shall we attain that ecstasy which is characterized by copious cheers of joy held in internal control the last line also reads differently kada syamanandodagata bahula bashpa khula drushaha when shall we have our eyes filled with copious tears arising out of joy vitirne sarvasve taruna karuna purna hrudaya smarantah samsare viguna parinamam vidigatim vayam punyaranye parinata sharat chandra kiranah triyama neshamo harachharana chintaika sharanah 86 giving away all possessions with a heart filled with tender compassion remembering the course of destiny which ends so ruefully in this world and as the only refuge for us meditating on the feet of hara that is shiva oh we shall spend in the holy forest nights aglow with the beams of the full autumnal moon kada varanasya mamaratati nirodhasi vasan vasanah kaupinam shirasi nidadhanonjali putam aye gauri nada tripura hara shambho trinayana प्रसीदेत्या क्रोशन्नि मिशमिव न्येशामि दिवसान 87 when shall i pass the days like a moment residing on the banks of the celestial river in varanasi clad in a kaupina lined cloth and with folded hands raised to the forehead crying out o oh, lord of gauri the slayer of tripura the giver of all good the three eyed have mercy snatva gangaihi payobihi shuchi kusuma phalai rachayitva vibotvam dhyeye dhyanam niveshya kshiti dhara kuhara grava paryanka mule atma ramah phalashi guru vachana prasatvat prasadat smarare dukham mokshe kadaham samakara charane pumsi seva samuttham 88 having bathed in the waters of the ganga and worshiped thee o lord with unblemished fruits and flowers and having concentrated my mind by my stony bed within the mountain cave on the object of my meditation blissful in the self alone living on fruits and devoted to the guru's words when shall i o oh, thou enemy of cupid through thy grace become released from the grief which has arisen from my serving the man of prosperity samakara charane 
with the sign of a shark in the feet said to be a sign of uncommon prosperity according to the science of divination by bodily signs ekaki nispruhaha shantaha pani patro digambaraha kada shambho bhavishyami karma nirmulana kshamaha 89 o siva when shall i living alone free from desires peaceful in mind with only the hand to eat from and the four quarters for garment that is naked be able to root out all karma panim patrayatam nisarga shuchina bhikshena santushyatam yatra kwapi nishidatam bahutrunam vishvam muhuhu pashyatam atyagepi tanora khanda paramanandhava bhoda sprusha madva kopi shiva prasada sulabaha sampatsyate yoginam 90 those who have only their hand to eat from who are contented with begged food pure by itself who repose themselves anywhere that is require no house or bed who constantly regard the universe like almost a blade of grass who even before giving up the body experience the uninterrupted supreme bliss for such yogis indeed the path which is easy of access by shiva's grace becomes attainable the path that is to say of moksha or supreme liberation end of chapter 9 worship of shiva recording by uday sagar chapter 10 of vairagya satakam by bhartruhari translated by swami madhavananda this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by uday sagar the way of life of a realized ascetic kaupinam shatakhanda jarjarataram khanda punastha drushi naishchintyam nirapeksha baikshyamashanam nidra smashane vane स्वातंत्र्येन निरंकुशं विहरनं स्वान्तं प्रशान्तं सदा स्थैर्यं योगमहोत्सवेपि च यदि त्रैलोक्य राज्येन किं 91 इफ देयर इज अ कौपिना इवन वन आउट एंड श्रेडेड अ हंड्रेड टाइम्स एंड अ रैपर आल्सो ऑफ द सेम कंडीशन इफ वन इज फ्री फ्रॉम ऑल डिस्क्वायरिंग थॉट इफ फूड देयर इज अपटेंड अनकंडीशनली from begging and sleep on a cremation ground or in the forest if one wanders alone without any let or hindrance if the mind is always calm and if one is steadfast in the feast of joy of yoga what is then worth the rulership of the three worlds brahmanda mandali matram kim lobhaya manasvinaha shafari surite nabdihi chubdho na khalu jayate 92 can this universe which is but a mere reflection engender greed in wise men the ocean surely does not become agitated by the movement of a little fish just as the fish cannot set up a swaying of the ocean so this universe a mere image in pure consciousness cannot move the wise men who identify themselves with it to any idea of covetousness mandali may simply mean an orb which being a limited thing is of little importance to the wise man matar lakshmi bhajasva kinchada param matamkshini masma burbhogeshu pruhayala vastava vashe ka nispruhana masi sadya hasyuta falasha patra putika पात्रैहि पवित्री कृतैर्भिक्षा वस्तुभिरेव संप्रति वयम् वृत्तिम् समीहा महे 93 ओ मदर लक्ष्मी गॉडेस ऑफ वेल्थ सर्व दव समवन एल्स डू नॉट लॉन्ग फॉर मी दोस हु डिजायर एन्जॉयमेंट आर सब्जेक्ट टू दी बट व्हाट आर्ट दव टू अस हु आर फ्री फ्रॉम डिजायर्स now we wish to live upon food articles obtained from begging and placed 
conformably to its being sanctified in a receptacle of palasa leaves pieced together on the spot the palasa vessels are enjoined in the smritis as purifying the food kept in them mahashayya prudvi vipula mupadanam bhujalata vitanam chakasham vyajanamanukulo yamanilaha suraddhipaschandro virati vanita sangamuditaha sukhi shantaha shete muniratanu bhutir nrupa iva 94 the earth is his vast bed the arms is ample pillow the sky is his canopy the genial breeze is fan the autumnal moon is his lamp and rejoicing in the company of abnegation as his wife the sage lies down happily and peacefully like a monarch of undiminished glory vikshashi janamadya sangarahitaha swayatta cheshtaha sada hana dana virakta marga nirataha kaschit tapasvi sthitaha radhya khirna vishirna jarna vasanaha samprapta khandasano nirmano nirahankrutihi shama sukha bhogaika baddha spruha 95 there lives the real ascetic who feeds himself on arms unattached to the society of men always free in his efforts that is without obligation or restraint from outside and pursuing a path of indifference as regards what to give up or what to take his worn out garment is made up of rags cast away in streets and his seat is a blanket received by chance he is devoid of pride and egoism and is concerned only in enjoying the happiness arising from the control of mind chandala kimayam dvijati radava shudrodha kim tapasah kim va tatva viveka peshala matir yogishwara kaupi kim ityutpanna vikalpa jalpa mukharai rabashyamana janairna krudha phadinaiva tushta manaso yanti svaya yoginah 96 when accosted by people who loquaciously express doubt and surmise such as is he a chandala or a twice born or a sudra or an ascetic or perhaps some supreme yogi with his mind full of the discrimination of reality the yogis themselves go their way neither pleased nor displeased in mind the chandala is accursed beyond the pale of the four castes while the sudra belongs to the fourth caste the brahmana kshatriya and vaisya form the three twice born castes himsa shunya mayatna labhya mashanam dhatra marutkalpitam vyalanam pashavastrunankura bhujastushtah sthali shainaha samsararnava langhana kshama dhiyam vrutti hi kruta sa runam ta manveshayatam prayanti satatam sarve samaptim gunah 97 if for serpents even air has been provided by the creator as food obtainable without killing or toiling if beasts are contented with feeding on grass sprouts and lying on ground for men also with intelligence strong enough to lead across the ocean of transmigratory existence some such livelihood has been created and those who seek this have all their gunas invariably brought to their final dissolution when the gunas sattva rajas and tamas are finally reduced to the inactivity of equipoise the yogi reaches beyond maya the last line may also be interpreted differently but in ramaging for it all one's virtues are apt to come to an end ganga tire himagiri shila bhadda padmasanasya brahma dhyana abhyasana vidhina yoga nidram gatasya kim thair bhavyam mama sudivasair yatra te nirvishanka kanduyante jharata harinah swangamange madiye 98 will those happy days come to me 
when on the bank of the ganga sitting in the lotus posture on a piece of stone in the himalayas i shall fall into the yoga nidra that is lose all consciousness in samadhi or perfect concentration resulting from a regular practice of the contemplation of brahman and when old antelopes having nothing to fear will rub their limbs against my body padmasanam literally lotus seat sitting cross-legged so that the soles of the feet protrude above along the thighs panihi patram pavitram brahmana parigatam bhaiksha makshayamannam vistirnam vastramasha dasha kamachapalam talpamasvalpamurvim yesham nissangathangi karana parinata svanta santoshi naste dhanyaha samnyasta dainya vyatikara nikara karma nirmulayanti ninety nine with the hands serving as sacred cup with begged food that comes through wandering and never runs short with the ten quarters as their ample garment and the earth as a fixed spacious bed blessed are they who having forsaken the manifold worldly associations which an attitude of want breeds and self-contented with a heart fully matured through their acceptance of absolute seclusion root out all karma that is the chain of cause and effect which grows on as action and desire in life follow each other dainya vyatikarani karaha we prefer to take as the many forms of contact with the world which result from the poverty of an attitude of seeking worldly objects matar medini tata maruti sakhe tejaha subandho jala atar vyoma nibadda esha bhavata mantyaha pranamanjalihi yushmat sanga vashopajati sukruta spara suran nirmala gnana pasta samasta moha mahima liye parabrahmani hundred o earth my mother o wind my father o fire my friend o water my good relative o sky my brother here is my last salutation to you with clasped hands having cast away infatuation with its wonderful power by means of an amplitude of pure knowledge resplendent with merits developed through my association with you all i now merge in supreme brahman the terms of familiarity and the endearment used of the five elements are appropriate in view of the final point of blissful parting to which the yogi has been carried through those subtle tattvas or essence of the five elements which characterize the intermediate stages of yogic practice iti vairagya satakam sampurnam here ends the vairagya satakam end of chapter 10 the way of life of a realized ascetic recording by uday sagar end of vairagya satakam by bhartruhari translated by swami madhavananda